budgeting and it just goes out the window. It just never seems to work and you always find yourself going back into the same pattern of spending and having no money. So today I wanted to talk about how I budget for a family of four and my little tips and tricks on saving money. So before we jump into the video, make sure you click that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on. Guys, I just did a thumbs up. I mean, you can give the video a thumbs up, but turn that notification bell on so you don't miss out on any videos. And with all that said, let's jump into budgeting. So first things first is actually take a look at your bank statements and see where your money is going because there's all these sinking funds going out the window like Netflix bills, cable TV, some phone crap. You know what I mean? So have a look into that and see if you can cut in any area. So we actually don't watch TV much, so we no longer pay for Netflix. The only thing we do as a sinking fund is our Spotify bill because, oh my goodness guys, music is live. If you can cut out any of those funds, then you're already putting yourself that much more ahead. So the second thing I wanted to mention is get out cash instead of paying things on your card because you're more likely to spend less because you have it in your hand and you know how much you're actually spending. Whereas on your card, you don't check as regularly, so you're more likely to spend more dollars. The third thing I wanted to talk about is planning your food budget. So we can spend so much money on food and it can be ridiculously expensive. So a great way to cut down cost is to meal plan and meal prep. And the way we shop is fortnightly. That way we don't overindulge because I noticed when we were shopping weekly, we were, we were accumulating more things and more things were also getting wasted. So if you're worried about wastage, what we do is we eat fresh produce on the first week and canned goods and frozen produce on the second week so nothing's going to waste in that second week. Also, shopping fortnightly is time saving because if you're a busy mama like me, then you're not going to be wanting to run to the shops every minute. So my tip number four is to stay clear of shopping centers because that is like a money sinking hole. You see that thing and you want it. You instantly have the need for it. So if you can avoid shopping centers at all costs and buy your things online that you actually need, then you will save yourself so much money. I know that I can save so well if I actually just avoid the shops, but as soon as I step foot in there, then oh my goodness, all those savings are gone guys and it's just such a waste of time at the end of the day. So now I want to talk about how we financially budget. So I'm going to do this weekly and I'm going to split it into two sections. So I'm going to talk about Isaac's payment and then my payments. So let's start off with Isaac, my partner's payments first, and I'm going to go with the minimum amount that we get weekly. So he gets minimum $750 and $420 of that goes on to rent. Now about $50 of that goes on to any additional bills and another $50 of that goes on to extra food. He has a snack addiction guys and I've tried to cut him down but he <laughs> insists. So the other thing that gets taken out of Isaac's money is $50 of petrol and $15 a week for his gym membership. So then we're left with around $100 and $50 of that automatically goes into our savings. So my account, I get around $550 a week, give or take, because it does fluctuate whether or not I do have clients that week. So that $550 goes on either savings or debt and whatever other sinking expenses that I have. So I pay $20 for our gym membership because I do pay for Theodore's crèche fees, so it is more expensive than Isaac's, and that automatically goes out of my account. So we do share finances as a family, but this is just what works best for us because certain things come out of certain accounts. At the end of the day, it's all shared money. If something needs to be taken out of one account and transferred to another, and that's fine, we have to be flexible. So the other things that come out of my account is debt bills. So I pay $100 in photography bills, guys, because when I was pregnant, I racked up over $4,000 in photography bills. Take some DIY photos because, oh my goodness, it's almost a year down the track and I am still paying it. And then I 
use around $25 a week for petrol. Now I actually don't drive that much in my car and if I do need extra petrol money then Isaac normally fills my car up. So I recently just got a new phone which means another $1,500 phone bill and I really wanted to be in the mind frame of actually buying a phone outright but we were not in the financial position and if you heard my story on my vlog then you will understand that my original phone got dropped into the toilet and I urgently needed a phone because we don't have internet at home and it's my work life. A $1,500 phone bill equals out to paying $25 a week including my credit so that gets taken out of my account and then whatever is remaining gets put onto debt or into our savings. So what we're working on right now is to kick out all debt, eradicate it by the end of the year. So we've accumulated about $750 in credit card fees. So it was around $3,000, but we've knocked it down with our tax payments. And we do make the credit card a priority because we have six months to pay it off before we start getting interest. So we normally use our credit card for holidays. We do make it a priority to pay it off within that six months. So even if I need to sacrifice a lot of things that fortnight or that month, then it will all go onto the credit card. So my photo bills do come out interest free. So that just comes out fortnightly. So I owe about $1,500 left of photography fees. And by the end of the year, I want to completely kick that out. So if I need to, I will make that a priority and put all my money onto that and sacrifice a few things. So we might sacrifice eating out or that extra savings or even like that extra snack bill and it will just go all on debt. So I like to put 80% of my income away into either savings or paying off debt. Now I'd like to say that we do the whole live off one income thing, but it is not feasible for us. I'd love to try and convince Isaac to do it, but he does like to have that little bit of financial freedom to um, just be able to like go out on a date and spend money on just things that he likes or like that I like I guess. So that pretty much wraps it up for our financial planner, how we do things financially and how we budget. So if you like this video don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and click that subscribe button if you want to join our little community here on YouTube and don't forget to turn that notification bell on so you don't miss out on any videos and with all that said I will see you in the next video. Bye guys!